What's up guys? My name is Jackie. If you are new here, I am so glad you've came. And if you are back, maybe from the last video that I posted about the first part of this video, I am so glad you're here to join us. So if you saw the first part, you know that we went through this seed container that I have here, just talking about all of the new things that I got that I am excited to grow this next year. And today we're going to be diving into this one. So I have two of these containers that are pretty packed full with seeds. Last time we talked a little bit about microgreens, the different places that you can buy stuff from. I'll do a little bit of a recap here, but if you wanna go see that video, I will link it down below. I get my seeds really from four places, primarily from three. And occasionally there's, you know, one or two random places thrown in from here and there. The three that I mainly shop at are Botanical Interest, Rare Seeds, or Baker Creek, and Am I Gardener. Most of my seeds are probably from Baker Creek just because I absolutely love their photography. They just entice you in a way that makes you wanna buy everything on their site. Without further ado, let's get into it because there are a lot. Starting off strong, let's talk about Cosmos. So Cosmos are beautiful. They come in all kinds of different colors. I have two pink ones right here. This is from the 2023 new seeds from uh, Baker Creek. This one is Zinnia Cosmos, and this one is Apricot Cosmos. These flowers are fantastic for cut flowers. They are great for um, just direct sowing. They take like minimal effort. You can just sprinkle them anywhere and they'll come up and look beautiful for a lot of the season, you know, towards the end of the season, middle end. And I am going to be using these to hopefully try and dye some fabric, yarn, use it as cosmetic, stuff like that. So I'm really excited to, to grow these because I grew Fizzy Rose Picketty this past year and just like a plain white Cosmo and I love them. Let's talk about cabbage. Cabbage and I did not get along last year but I will try again until I get it right and I also picked up some new ones I'm going to try again the red acre cabbage as well as the mammoth red rock cabbage but I also picked up a few other ones in some seed sales this year which is another thing that I talked about in the last video if you want to get a good bang for your buck wait until the middle of the season you know for shopping for the next season because some places like botanical interest and my gardener will have great sales where you can really um, stock up on whatever varieties are left. The downside of that is that you don't always get, you know, the varieties that you want because it is whatever is left in their inventory, but you can get some amazing deals. If you see her in the background, Olivia is joining us. So we've got Copenhagen Market Cabbage. Okay, okay. So we've got Copenhagen Market Cabbage and Savoy cabbage. This one I think is really interesting looking because of the texture. I'm growing these Green Globe Improved Artichokes because if you've never seen an artichoke flower, I'll put a picture on a screen, just a random one from Google, because they are gorgeous. They look like something out of Avatar. We've got Amsterdam celery, and I'm not even going to try butchering this name, but this gorgeous new eggplant from Rare Seeds this year. If you have any good eggplant recipes, I would love if you would let me know in the comments down below because I'm really looking forward to growing that one. And then as far as onions, we've got garlic chives, Walla Walla, which is a super popular one, Cabernet, Flat of Italy, and White Sweet Spanish. Now, something that you wanna think about before you go ahead and just start buying whatever onion looks good to you. Keep in mind if you are living in the South or the North, because if you're living in the South, you're gonna to wanna to grow either indeterminate or short day, hello Olivia, short day onions. And if you live in the North like I do, you're going to want to grow long day onions. And that just, depends on how many hours of sun you get in the summer to allow the onions to kind of head up and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the proper onion for your area. I didn't really get a whole lot of new lettuce this year. I Okay. I did get red sales lettuce and then some baby green spinach. Everything else I've pretty much had. Of course, we all know that when you order from Baker Creek, 
most likely you're gonna get Merlot lettuce seeds as your free seed. I'm gonna be growing some of the same stuff that I did last year, like Little Gem, Butterhead lettuce. And if you plant a lot of them like really close together, you can harvest them as more of like a leafy green. And if you give them more space in between the plants, you can actually have them head up and then you have a head of lettuce. But last year I grew them in a little low tunnel I made over a raised bed and just harvested them as like a cut and come again crop as just leafy greens for salads. And salads are something that are really good when the weather is super cold. So if you can grow them like a low tunnel um, or like a winter sowing method where you get them when you still have like snow on the ground or it's really cold, it's crisp and sweet. All the sugars are condensed, really great. And then in here we've got some more brassicas. We've got Waltham 29 broccoli. If you saw my last video, you know I talked about how this can also this is also a popular one that you can get as a microgreen so you can buy it in bulk and get a ton for a really good price it'll grow just the same it's just microgreens are sold in bulk to to grow a lot at the time and then once they shoot up you're supposed to harvest them right as or before they get their first set of true leaves you're eating the the sprout pretty much whereas these are sold in smaller packs to grow on to get the head of broccoli. But if you got the microgreen seeds, you can totally grow them just the way you would grow these. They're the same seeds. Then we have dwarf blue curled kale, feather frills kale, snowball cauliflower, Romanesco broccoli. And that's what we got in this one here for just kind of like assorted brassicas. And now we're on to the flowers. A lot of the flowers that I'm going to be growing are not necessarily for like aesthetic purposes. Some of them are, but I am really growing a lot of these to try and dye fabrics, yarn, food, cosmetics, things like that. So when it comes to these sweet peas, I got these really beautiful colors. I'm hoping that I can maybe do some really cool dyeing uh, yarn with these or maybe just um, some like topical applications because these sweet peas are not good for consumption. These are toxic, so you don't want to, you know, put it in things like lipstick or, you know, food dyes or anything like that. So you just want to be careful. Not everything can be used for all types of dyes. Got huckleberry. I've never had a huckleberry, so I'm excited to grow that and maybe try some huckleberry jam. And then I got the three seeds that Baker Creek carries for strawberries. We have Alexandria strawberry, white soul, and yellow wonder wild. It will be interesting to see how they grow. I do have some of each of these started right now just to see how they do under grow lights. And yeah, it'll be interesting to try something that's more like a, like a wild strawberry. Moving on, Sahara Rudbeckia. Those colors are absolutely gorgeous, especially for like fall applications. That'll be really pretty. Soulmate Milkweed. Ice Ballet Milkweed. These are going to pretty much just be to bring pollinators to the garden like uh, monarch butterflies because the more pollinators you have in your garden actually the more beneficial insects you have to your garden, the less pesticides you'll have to use, the more success you'll have, and it's just good for everybody. And then they'll be there to pollinate the things that you want pollinated. Super Bisma Giant Alba Petunia. And if you're somebody who does a lot of container gardening uh, in the spring and in the fall with pansies, they can get quite pricey. You know, if you're buying a ton of them, this packet of, for $3 from Baker Creek came with a minimum of 100 seeds. And look at how gorgeous. You get some of the more um, exotic colors than you would find at a uh, garden center. So those are the historic florist mix of pansies. We've got, got the blues pansies. Super Bisma Cosmic Cherry Petunia. These actually can be used as cherry flavoring for like desserts and pastries and stuff like that. And we've got Mother of Pearl Poppies. And something that I wanted to grow for like a dried floral decoration for in the house are these Hungarian blue poppy, they're bread seed poppies because they get these uh, really big seed heads that then can be used as like a dry, a dried floral in your house and look very beautiful. And here we have Love Parade Yarrow. Bowles Black Viola, another really beautiful one. I've grown Black Magic Viola, which is a little bit different than this, 
but I'm hoping it does the same thing because that, that black magic viola was absolutely a showstopper a couple years ago when there was still snow on the ground it was just like a thick carpet of black flowers they lasted forever in the spring it was really really pretty Lata fire Lata fire violas and then I don't grow a ton of sunflowers, although I should start because my chickens absolutely love sunflowers. So I got the ice cream sunflowers and these amber beauty. Now I got these four salvias here. Really pretty uh, color combos here because I was hoping that these would act as really good cosmetic dyes or yarn dyes and stuff like that. Got Sky Dance, which is like a periwinkle, lavendery type blue, purple. We've got Swan Lake, a more purple, and a more salmon. So I'm hoping these two are super pigmented and I can use these for like eyeshadows or blush or something of the nature. And here I have just one to share with you and for no good reason other than it's really adorable and beautiful is Raspberry Ripples Dianthus. All right, we've almost made it to the end. We have two more to go through. We're getting there. In here, I've got Cambridge Blue Lobelia Midnight Blends in Patience. The Watchman Hollyhock, which I believe Hollyhock is a biennial, so it won't flower until the second season. I could be wrong. Yes, biennial. Full sun, bloom summer, five to seven feet tall. So that'll be interesting to see. As well as African Bride, Love and a Mist, and Midnight Nigella, Love and a Mist. Last one, we got Green Mist Ami here, Silver Aster. I actually bought these to grow last season, but then I never got around to planting them. Impala Castor Beans. If you want something that is a showstopper that will literally stop cars in their tracks, grow this one. I actually had to like track this down because I saw several houses in neighboring cities that had these and they, they look exotic. They look very tropical. They're humongous plants, but they are quite the spectacle in your garden. So I highly recommend that if you really want a wow factor in your garden. And this comes to the last three varieties that I'm gonna share with you guys today. We've got Rocky Mountain Blue Columbine, Grand View Catmint, and I am so excited for these. I put myself on like the email list to be notified when these were in stock. This is a brand new one from Baker Creek. Leprechaun Gold Columbine. It has these really deep purple flowers and the leaves are variegated like yellow and green. They're just absolutely gorgeous. I am so excited. This is probably this, the one thing that I am most excited to grow this next year. So we will see how these do. And they are hardy down to zone 4A, so they should be a perennial and come back. So that's awesome. And just one more thing I wanted to mention because I see this uh, confusion go around a lot in the gardening world. A lot of people put a lot of emphasis on what USDA zone that they grow in. Like I am a 6B here. Uh, which means I think it doesn't get down normally past zero or something. It's a 10 year average. It goes in increments of 10 degrees. All that means is your average low temperature in the winter. That has nothing to do with how long your season is, when your season starts, how hot your season gets. So when you're talking about annuals, which a lot of vegetables are, you want to be looking at your first and last average frost dates. Your your zone, your USDA zone, has absolutely nothing to do with your gardening season. So I just wanted to put that out there, that if you're talking about annuals, your USDA zone means nothing. If you're talking about perennials, that's when you're talking about the USDA zone. So I hope that helps clear up some of the confusion. I know all these terms can be overwhelming when you first get started, but 
It's also exciting. The new year really holds a lot of promise. It's not time to start seeds yet, but it is time to get all your ducks in a row and get all the seeds that you want started because come in just a month or two, depending on where you live, it will be time to start growing some of the seeds that take a little bit longer like peppers and tomatoes. So I hope you all enjoyed these videos. I have a ton more coming on garden content with what to grow in different types of gardens. If you wanted to grow a tea garden or a medicinal garden, or if you're interested in learning more about how to use plants to dye things, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'd love to have you as a part of my community and I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.